Hello, my name is Harper and I'm 34 years old. I've always been taught and told that as a woman, my place is in the kitchen and the home. Despite this, I would do my best to make a name for myself to avoid being exploited, and that's exactly what I did. When my evil husband and mother-in-law conspired to work against me and bring me to my downfall, it all started when I noticed that both my husband and my mother-in-law would make household decisions without my consent and my knowledge. Babe, why am I finding all these plans on expanding the house when were you going to tell me that this is something you wanted to do? I don't see any need to tell you since I'm the one making the most money in this house, so I can do what I want. Okay, but I'm your wife. We have to talk about things like this. Get off my back, woman. I don't really know when my sweet Jake turned so sour, but at some point, he did, and he's completely unrecognizable at this point. He hates me for some reason, and I just don't know why. I try to be kind to counteract the anger I would constantly receive, but as the years went by, he appeared to be getting worse. Okay, if you want to renovate the house, that's fine. I won't stand in your way, but as your wife, I would like to be a bit more involved in household decisions. Why? I already tell my mom everything, so I don't know why you're so obsessed with wanting to know every single thing. Yeah, and why is that? Why do you always turn to your mother when it comes to decisions there are to do with us? Is she part of this marriage too? I told you to get off my back. Don't make me repeat myself and don't make me do anything I'll regret. This is how our conversations would go nowadays, just constant arguing and fighting, and it was taking a toll on me, my children, my family members, and my friends. They all constantly told me to get a divorce and leave him, but I was too loyal, I couldn't bear the thought of no longer being with him. That was until my mother-in-law started to become more involved in our lives, and all the dots began to connect. You see, I found out that my mother-in-law and my husband were doing some very unsavory and shady things, and this is how I found out about everything. My mother-in-law was making bi-weekly visits, which were increasing in frequency and length. Before, she would only come once a month, and it slowly but steadily grew into more visits, which would be fine had she not been such an insane person. Oh wow, if it isn't my favorite daughter-in-law. I'm your only daughter-in-law. Oh hush now, can't you let me compliment you in peace? It's no wonder why your husband is always coming to me, you're such a bore. Might I ask what brings you here today? Well, if you must know, I'm here to do some work with my son, nothing of your concern. If it has anything to do with the household funds that I constantly see depleting, then it is my concern. How dare you accuse me of doing something like that, stealing? How dare you? Jake will have your head on a platter if I tell him what you just insinuated. I didn't insinuate anything, perhaps it's your guilty conscience seeping through. Mirabelle stormed off as mad as can be. I suspected that she was going to complain to her son, but at that point, I didn't care. I had gotten so emotionally detached and distant from this entire situation that I didn't care about the various threats that were constantly hurled my way. I just did my best to avoid them at all times. That was until I received something suspicious in my email. It read, Hey mom, please remember to get the correct details for Cold Harper. We can't let this plan fail, you've put too much effort and care into ensuring that everything works out smoothly for us. I can't wait for everything to go down, we're gonna be rich. Love you loads, Jake. I was confused. We're gonna be rich, Cold Harper? What did all this mean, and why was I part of this plan without actually being informed about anything? After much thought and deliberation, I thought that I should respond to the email. Hey Jake, it appears as though I've been attached to this thread, please kindly explain to me what is going on. Much love, Harper. After sending the email, Jake decided to call me. I was so shocked by the angry tone in his voice. Ignore what you just saw, it has nothing to do with you. 
Well, clearly something is going on if you're using my name in your business meetings with your mother. Harper is a common name, grow up, mind your own business before I do something I regret. What are you going to do, Jake? Ha! Huh? Tell me what are you planning on doing that you're going to regret later? You know, Harper, I don't get angry much, but this time, you've done it. I'll see you when I get home. He hung up the phone, and I began to get scared. What were these two planning, and why was he being so angry and secretive about everything? Due to his threats, I felt extremely unsafe in the household, so I packed some bags and decided to stay in a hotel for the time being. I couldn't afford to keep spiking my anxiety up because I was constantly in contact with two devils. Once I arrived in the hotel room, I decided to call my friend Ben. Ben and I have been childhood friends, and I knew that he would help me during this stressful and troubling time. Ben arrived soon after I called him. Hey, I'm so sorry, once again, for what happened. Yeah, well, I guess it's just part of the marriage package. Let me show you what the email said, maybe you can help me out. Okay, sure. I showed the email, and he shared the same look of confusion that I had when first reading it. Ben pondered some more, and finally, he said, we need to get inside their heads and figure out what they're doing. I don't know, but something about this seems fishy. We gotta find out what they're hiding, and since they don't want to be forthcoming with you, we have to look for other means of acquiring information. Like what? Like checking the account funds and balances. Have you noticed anything recently? Yes, the household funds from the joint bank accounts are steadily decreasing. I ask about it, but you know how Jake and Mirabelle. Okay, then let's start there. It should be noted that Ben is extremely tech-savvy. He's the type of person who can hack into databases if he really wanted to, and his skills were shining during our sleuthing. Once I opened up the bank accounts and bank books for Ben to see, he began his work, searching and scanning for any discrepancies. After several hours of us deliberating and wondering what was going on, we reached a breakthrough, but it was definitely something that we weren't prepared for. It turns out that my lovely husband and mother-in-law were participating in some shady deals to incur more money. This was a hypothesis, but all of our doubts were confirmed when Ben managed to log into my husband's email account and see all of the evidence there for ourselves. Lengthy email chains between Jake and Mirabelle, they were embezzling funds from my husband's company, and that's not all. The gag is that they were going to incriminate me and make it seem like I was the one doing all of this. That's what Code Harper is, it's when they plan to unleash their gruesome attack and make me take the fall for everything. Yes, exactly. Jake would transfer the embezzled funds into the joint bank account and then use their money to make it seem like I was the one doing it. This is honestly a new level of sickness. Why would anyone do something like that? I honestly don't know. I began to break down and sob, but Ben promptly stopped me. No, Harper, this isn't the time to cry, your life is about to be ruined if we don't do something to stop them. You're right, but what can I do to stop this? I don't know, let's think. It would be easy to go to the police with all of this information, but honestly, I needed more to satiate the bubbling rage that was in my core. I had to get back at these clowns, and I had to hit them where it hurts, and that's when I got the idea. Okay, I think I got something. Okay, let's hear it. So, we know that these two love money, right? I mean, that's why they're doing all this stuff, right? So, get more money. What if I came to Jake with a business proposal that he couldn't refuse, and what if you disguise yourself as the ringleader of this fake shady business so that we can catch them red-handed? That's a brilliant idea. Let's put that to work. After ironing out the details and realizing that time is of the essence, I called Jake to put the plan into action. Where are you? 
you decided to run away from the consequences, come back home at once. I didn't run from anything, actually, I left home because I had to tend to a very important business meeting, a business that you'd be interested in. What kind of business? Oh, it's a special kind, one that you might like. I briefly told him some details of this fake business, doing my best not to disclose everything but making it sound interesting enough so that his ears would perk up. Sounds interesting. So you're saying all I have to do is invest some funds, and then the returns will be at a higher rate? Yes, Jake, it's that simple. How much is needed? We have to invest a total of $30,000, but we can do it in installments if you'd like. I'll get back to you. In the background of the call, I heard him talking to Mirabelle about everything, letting her know what I said and debating on whether or not they should do the deal. Mirabelle sounded excited from the little that I heard, and it was confirmed because what Jake said next was shocking. Okay, so we're going to do this, and I'm going to send the full $30,000, so that we can do this quickly. When it comes to these details, time is of the essence, we don't have time to dilly-dally. Okay, which account will you use? I'll send it to the joint bank account, of course. Okay, sure thing. We ended the call, and later on in the evening, Ben and I received an email on Jake's account, and it read, just sent the $30,000 to the joint bank account. It's like she's putting her nail in her coffee, this is going to be way too easy. She'll go down for our crimes, and we'll run with the money. Seeing those messages hurt me a lot. After everything, this man wanted to scam me like this. The good thing is, Ben was recording everything, even the phone call that we had with Jake, so that we could build a solid case against them. I'm so sorry for everything, Harper, this man doesn't deserve you. I hope you find someone better. Me too. The next morning, Ben returned to my hotel room so that we could continue investigating and building our case against Jake and Mirabelle. Not only did I want them to go down for their crimes, but I felt like I needed to be compensated for the time that was wasted in our horrendous marriage. I was going to take everything from this man, so I also collated as much evidence and information regarding emotional and mental abuse that I've endured for these years. I was going to make sure that he lives a miserable life alongside his mother. Ben was helping me out so much, and I was so appreciative of everything that he was doing for me. He did make me happy, and sometimes I wondered why I didn't marry him instead. Why are you staring at me like that? No reason, sorry. No, it's quite all right, let's get back to work though. We continued working, and we were finding breakthrough after breakthrough, cementing the plan on how Jake and Mirabelle were going to get caught. I wanted the whole audio to be public, messy. I wanted to ruin these people's lives the same way they wanted to ruin mine. It was insane to think that such a thing could happen. A week went by, and Jake was wondering why I hadn't come home yet, but I was reducing as much contact with him as possible because I knew very soon that he would be behind bars for a very long time. At last, I contacted Jake to initiate the plan that Ben and I had been working on for the past week, and things were falling into place. I invited Mirabelle and Jake to a pretty crowded cafe, and once they arrived, the plan was set in motion, and I hit record on my voice recorder that was concealed. So glad that you two came. Just cut to the chase, we all shouldn't be out here so publicly. Why did you suggest this busy cafe, anyways? I'm getting nervous. Hush, Jake, I quite like this cafe, and besides, it's like we'll hide in plain sight. Fine, it's about time you called us and informed us about the business deal we talk about. What took you so long, and why haven't you been home? Yeah, I've been busy ironing out the details of this deal, honey, wouldn't you want everything to be precise? A meticulous trust me. Fine, whatever, but when is our money going to come back to us? Soon, soon, don't worry, but first, I would like to know something. 
Where did you get all that money? What? What are you saying? The $30,000 that you send into the account, where did you get that? Does it matter where I got it? Aren't you also going to use the money as well? Answer my question, Jake. Why are you interrogating him so much? This is why we don't involve you in our plans because you have a big fat mouth. You think I don't know the truth? Do you think I don't know just how disgusting and slimy you two are? I know everything. I know that you are embezzling funds from your company. How dare you accuse me of doing such a thing? I would never, even if I did, you don't have any proof. I decided to make a calculated decision, and I said, you're right, I don't have proof, so why don't you just tell me the truth so that we can fix this, huh? You see, you don't have proof. Mom, I think we deserve to laugh a little, don't you think? Let me tell her everything. Jake went into full detail about how he started embezzling from his company. He also had no issue exposing that he was going to let me take the fall for it all, the while laughing with his mother, looking like two evil villains. After they had a good laugh, I tried to compose myself to not cause a scene. I calmly said, gotcha. I just got YouTube confessing everything that you were planning on doing. Oh please, what are you, a detective now? Don't make me laugh. I might not be a detective, but I am smart enough to record things. I then revealed my concealed recorder. I got everything you said here, which was practically a full confession. Honestly, why did you go into so much detail? Mirabelle's face turned pale, and she shouted, Jake, do something. Jake dove across the table to attempt to snatch it from me, but he was too late. He started to cause a scene, and the photographers that I had hired to capture these moments leaped into action, recording everything. Some young kids also took out their phones and began to stream the event, and let me tell you, it was truly something to behold. Jake was being held back by Ben, who merged with the photographers, and it was not looking good for the two criminals. Honestly, Jake looked like a raging and abusive maniac as he looked like he wanted to kill me, and Mirabelle was harassing the onlookers and passers-by, spitting profanities at them and me. It didn't take long for this debacle to go viral, and after that, I collected as much video evidence, the audio recording I took during the meeting, as well as all of the email chains and bank account details that Ben and I combed through, and I handed it to the police station to make my case. It didn't take long for the case to be examined since Ben and I had practically done all the work for them, and not long afterward, Jake, who had probably been publicly fired and humiliated after making a fool of himself on social media, as well as Mirabelle, who lost her positions as a budding socialite, stood trial for their crimes. The case was broadcast nationally, and Jake and Mirabelle were considered social pariahs at this point. Their faces were plastered on TV screens and newspapers for weeks, and subsequently, Ben and I were accoladed for our efforts of hard work. I think I divorced Jake while his trial was going on, and it was not a good look for him, which made it quite easy for me to get a hefty settlement. With that money, in addition to selling the home that Jake and I had lived in for so long, I couldn't stand being there anymore. I was becoming a financially free and independent woman. I would attend the trials for both Jake and Mirabelle to remind them that I was one step ahead of them and that they weren't as smart as they thought they were. They would often catch my eye in the courtroom and send me nasty glares. If looks could kill, I would be on the floor, but luckily, looks don't kill, and with the amount of criminal activity that was going on between the two, they are going to be in prison for a very, very long time, so I need not worry about them getting back at me as I will be living lavishly, writing a book about my experiences, and how Ben and I caught these weasels while they would be rotting in prison for the rest of their lives. Revenge is so sweet. Don't forget to hit that like button if you enjoyed this video, and if you're curious to see where this journey takes us next, make sure to subscribe and turn on notifications so you won't miss a single update.
Your support is what keeps this channel alive and kicking, and every like, comment, and share means the world to us. We've got plenty more stories, insights, and surprises coming your way, so stay tuned for the next video. Thanks for watching, and I'll see you in the next one.